Hi there, my name is Mr. Coat, and in this video we are going to prove the scaling property of the direct delta function, which is an important property for various domains in mathematics. So the scaling property can be expressed in the following way. Delta c times x minus x null is equal to 1 over the absolute value of c times delta x minus x null for some non-zero scalar c. So let's prove the scaling property. For the proof, we will distinguish two cases, one where c is greater than zero and one where c is less than zero. We will use integration for showing the scaling property. And for ease, let y be equal to c times x minus x null, which is of course equal to c times x minus c times x null. And thus, if we rewrite this, x is equal to y over c plus x null, and dx is equal to one over c times dy. This is because the first derivative of x with respect to y is equal to 1 over c. Now let's assume that c is greater than 0 and consider the following integral. So the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta c times x minus x null dx is equal to the integral of minus infinity to infinity over f y over c plus x null times delta y times 1 over c dy. So what we have done here is we substituted x by y over c plus x null. We replace c times x minus x null by y. And we interchange integrating over x by y. So we do this by replacing dx by 1 over c times dy. Then we have the following integral. We can get a constant out of an integral. And since c is a constant, 1 over c is still a constant. So we do that. We should now notice that for the integral, delta y will only be non-zero if y equals zero. That's a characteristic of the direct delta function. And if y equals zero, then y over c will be zero. So we only have fx null out of the integral. So the following holds. This is equal to 1 over c times fx null. Therefore, the integral that we originally had can be rewritten to 1 over c times fx null if c is greater than zero. So keep this conclusion in mind, and we will later on come back to it. But now let's assume that c is less than zero. For ease, again, assume the following. So c is equal to minus b, with b greater than zero. We do this related to the integration that we will perform later on. Let y be equal to minus b times x minus x null, which is of course equal to minus bx plus bx null. And thus, if we rewrite this, x is equal to minus y over b plus x null, and dx is equal to minus 1 over b times dy. Now let's again consider the integral that we considered earlier. So the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta c times x minus x null dx is equal to the integral from infinity to minus infinity over f minus y over b plus x null times delta y times minus 1 over b dy. So notice that the integration domain has flipped. This is because we have introduced a minus sign when switching from x to y. So what we have done here in this step is replace x by minus 1 over b plus x null. We replaced c times x minus x null by y. And we changed the integration over the variable x to the f variable y. So the x becomes minus 1 over b times dy. Again, we can do the same as in the previous case. We can get out the constant 1 over b, but also the minus sign. So that's what we do. Then we have a minus sign outside of the integral. We can also just get rid of the minus sign. The only implication that it will have is that the integration domain will again flip. So we again have an integration from minus infinity to infinity. Now we can again observe that delta y will only be non-zero if y equals zero. So again, the result of the integral will be fx null. So we have one over b times fx null. And if we want to replace b by c again, so remember that c is less than zero, b is greater than zero, and c is equal to minus b, we can do that by saying that this is equal to one over the absolute value of c times fx null. So for this case, it holds that the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta c times x minus x null dx is equal to one over the absolute value c times fx null if c is less than zero. Now, if we again consider the conclusions of these two cases, we get the following. So based on one and two, we have the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta c times x minus x null dx is equal to one over the absolute value c 
times fx null if c is less than zero, and one over c times fx null if c is greater than zero. But of course we can rewrite this. So in general, for any non-zero scalar c, we have that the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta c times x minus x null dx is equal to one over the absolute value of c times fx null. Now if we consider the translation property of the direct delta function, we know that fx null is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta x minus x null dx. So what we can do is we keep the left hand side of this equation, but we can replace fx null. So what we will have is that the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta c times x minus x null dx is equal to 1 over c times the integral from minus infinity to infinity over fx times delta x minus x null dx. And from this equality, it must hold that delta c times x minus x null is equal to 1 over the absolute value of c times delta x minus x null because the only thing that is different from the two e equations is that there's one over the absolute value of c over here, delta x minus x null over here, and we have here delta c times x minus x null. So this equality must hold for some non-zero scalar c. So that's what we had to prove, QED. So that's the proof. If you thought this was useful, make sure to hit the thumbs up to give this video a like. If you still have any questions, make sure to use the comment section. And if you want to see more of Mr. Code, make sure to subscribe. So stay cool. Bye.